anachronism as, as far as uh, a lot of things go. But I am not your typical guy going out picking up recycles to uh, get his next bottle of wine or fix. And I think I pretty much got it down to a science. Grew up in Connecticut, you get 120 days of precipitation every year, about two months of nice weather, and it's actually humid, and I don't like cold weather. I actually love the weather in Vietnam, tropical weather. <laughs> yeah, if it was only the weather, uh, it would have been great. After high school, a couple years of junior college, joined the service, three years. Uh, came back from the service, went to Temple University in Philadelphia. Got a degree in math. Did not want to work for anybody. Did not want to go to graduate school. Did not want to teach. Just enjoyed myself in my mid-twenties around Philadelphia for a few years. Fell in love and came out here. And that was the start of seven years of uh, ups and downs. But we have two wonderful children. And we got two great grandchildren, so even though Vicky and I didn't last, uh, got the best you can ask for. Started my own business, mail order business. Made Elvis Presley records, bootlegged. Did that for five years, ran a record store for seven years. Now my lifestyle has been affected by a couple of experiences in my life. One. I spent a year in Vietnam. Half of that, I was very lucky. First half, I was a recon medic. I traipsed through the jungle looking for trouble. That secondary MOS I had as a lab tech. Okay? It just so happened that the division I was in, the first division, Big Red One, at the headquarters and headquarters company base camp. They had a 40 bed field hospital and a little lab, and they needed a lab tech because the guy was going back, his enlistment was up, and they didn't have a replacement. They called me out of the field put me there. I got my last six months there. So I saw both sides of Vietnam, one from being in a potentially harm's way every second, and the other being in a relatively safe place, although everybody in Vietnam was in combat, because you never knew. Almost not nearly as bad as Iraq with people blowing themselves up. I mean, we didn't have some idiot who was going to blow himself up to blow you up. I, mean, I learned how to live, I knew how to live off the land. Cold climates I hate, but I could live off the land in any warm climate. I, mean, I know all the little outdoorsy tricks, and even how to make a compass if you get lost. So in, uh, in 2000, I said to myself, you know, I, I've seen, I've really caught up in the movies I wanted to see, and I never will read all the books I want to read. I need something to do. I thought I'd go back to school, and uh, and I did. For the last nine years, I've been I've gone full time at times, part time, full time usually at a university, part time at junior colleges or community colleges. You asked me what class I'll be taking in college this semester. Take a postcolonial literature and a creative nonfiction class. Uh, I always take two classes a semester, not only for for fun and grins and giggles, but uh, I have student loans and plan to stay in school for the rest of my life and never have to pay them back. That's just me beating up on the old system. And I have beat the stuffing out of it in my lifetime. Uh, I, I, I will do more junking and work harder at it if there's something that I want to spend some money on. Uh, like they just came out with an iPad and my granddaughter's birthday is in August. So I will, uh, in June, end of June after school, and in July, when I'm out of school, spend three weeks, put together $1,000 for a birthday present. Well, I always say hello to everybody as I pass them. I always want to be friendly. Uh, one out of three or four will say hi to me. Uh, now and then, as you saw this morning, somebody will some money. You see what just happened? Lady walked by. 
She said, here, keep yourself a coffee. I thought she handed me a dollar. A 20. If I look back on life, what would I change? Nothing. Besides that, you don't get that chance.